In our next section, we are going to talk about the OSPF optimization. In the first lesson of OSPF optimization, we will discuss rod summarization, which we mentioned earlier in more detail. Rod summarization is an important parameter for scalability in OSPF and helps us solve two important problems. The first problem is large routing tables. And the second is frequent LSA flutes through the autonome system. When a route is lost in each area, the routers in the other area are also required to perform the shortest path calculation. Route summarization can be done on the ABR or the ASPR to reduce the area database size. With route summarization, ABRs or ASBRs combine multiple route information into a single route. Route summarization directly affects bandwidth, CPU power and memory resources consumed by OSPF routing. With route summarization, only summarized routes are propagated into the backbone area which is area 0 and the stability of the network is enhanced. Here is how we can summarize the routes on the ABR. The commands we are using on ABR to summarize the routes is area and area ID and range. This is the more important thing we need to focus. Then we use the IP address and a mask. We are going to take a look on an example too. If you want to summarize on ASPR, which is router one for this example, the thing we are using is the summary address command this time. Here, as you can see that we have 0, 0 to 15 to 0 routes on the external AS domain, which is EIGRP. And if you want to summarize these routes on router one, we are using summary address and the IP address mask and that's it. And let's take a look to the OSPF virtual links right now. Normally guys, when designing OSPF, each area must be associated with area zero. A design like in the figure cannot be done for OSPF, but if areas cannot physically connect to each other, a solution can be used temporarily. In such a case, the route table of router 3 and router phone 4 does not see the network connected to the Ethernet interface of router 2. For this, the virtual link between router 3 and router 2 is configured as shown. As you can see in our figure, that's the backbone area. Area 1 is directly connected to here, but area 2 is not directly connected to backbone area and it's directly connected just to area 1. To resolve this problem, we need to use OSP virtual links and the configuration is made on the router 3 and router 2. We type router OSPF and the process number and we define the area 1, this area, which is directly connected to area 0 on both routers. Then we type virtual link and the router ID of the neighbor router. For router 3 we are typing the router ID of router 2 and for router 2 we are, we are typing the router ID of the router 3. And if you want to verify the virtual links we can use show IP OSPF virtual links command. 
the OSPF stub and total stub structure was developed to reduce the size of the OSPF database and the routing table. For example, on router 1, if we type show IP route, it can be seen that even the route records from the RIP network, this guy, are in the routing table of router 1. However, router 1 does not need this route. It only inflates the routing table of the router 1. Normally, we can solve this problem with the default route or accelerator, but our goal is to solve with OSPF. To solve this problem, stubby and totally stubby area configurations must be done. Stubby area, this guy, blocks type 5 LSAs, which means LSAs from external networks such as a RIP or OSP, uh, I'm sorry, RIP or AIGRP or something like that. And total stubby area blocks the type 3, 4 and 5 LSAs. And let's check how we can configure the OSPF stub area. Let's take a look to the router 3 configuration first. The OSPF configuration of router 3 is router OSPF and our process number. Then we advertise our networks and we are using area, area number which is area 2 and stub. Whenever we type this, the neighborhood between router 3 and router 4 is down. Unless we configure the OSPF stop flag on router 4. And to configure the OSPF stop on router 4, we are typing the same thing. We just type area, area number and stop and that's it. And let's take a look to the OSPF total stubby area configuration. To configure a total setup area on router 3, which is an AVR, we type area, area number, and this time we type stub no summary instead of stop. But in router 4, we are typing again area, area number, and just stop. And this makes, these configurations make area 2 as total stubby area and we block the type 3, 4 and 5 LSAs in this area. OSPF the NSSA allows the external routes outside the OSPF autonomous system to be advertised in the OSPF autonomous system. ASPR is found in NSSA and external networks flood in NSSA with ASPR type 7 LSA. The ABR which communicates the NSSA with the other areas does not allow the transmission of type 7 LSAs. It receives and converts them into type 5 LSAs and transmits them to the other areas allowing the OSPF autonomous system to learn the external networks of the other areas. And here is how we can propagate a default route in OSPF. If you want to propagate a default route in OSPF we type router OSPF and process number and here is the command for propagating default information and originate propagates a default route to other guys in OSPF domain. 